Hey guys, welcome back. Official stable Pi OT update rollout has now started for me one users. It's a stage rollout, so the update is being released based on the region you live. First, it was out for Netherlands, and now the update is also available for those who are living in USA. There might be other regions too where the users are getting the update, but mostly it's the places with less me one users. And I think we Indians will get the update last as the majority of me one users are from India, and the update will be rolled out only if the current release is found to be stable. So this is the update notification as you can see the update size is 1074.9 MB. It's the same beta update which got leaked before, same OS version which is 10.0.2.0 and the change log says the update adds FM radio support, adaptive battery and brightness, simpler ways to navigate your phone and recommended apps and actions based on your context. You can get this OT update if you change the region to Netherlands or USA but I would suggest to wait few days for the update to hit your region. Anyways to get this update you have to reset your phone, remove sim cards if any, turn off location services, connect to Wi-Fi and use any VPN app to set the location to either Netherlands and USA and then you should be getting the OTA notification and maybe you should stay connected to the VPN until you finish the entire download process. I have installed the update and rebooted back without any issues. Even though you have spoofed your device location to get the update, this is official OTA so you will be continuing to get the future updates. So now let's talk about the most frequent questions users ask me regarding Pi update on Mi A1. First very important thing many people were asking me if flashing Pi update will break your phone. Yes it is true that many people got their phones boot looping but it is not exactly about installing the Pi update. It's the downgrade process that break many user phones because Xiaomi made some changes to the firmware files. I break my phone too even though I got it back it's an extensive process to recover and it took me a couple of hours to figure out what exactly to do. So do not downgrade your phone after the Pi update. Also prior to upgrading to Pi take a backup of the EFS partition via TWRP if you have an unlocked bootloader and a low level backup of all system partitions via EDL mode. Second Mi A1 now supports dual 4G and Vivo LTE. I had no idea that Snapdragon 625 or X9 modem on this phone supports dual 4G so this is a very big surprise to me. Initially I never bothered to check then I have seen many people asking me about dual 4G so I checked and yes dual 4G and also VLTE is working great on Mi A1. I am using my Airtel and Geo sim cards on my phone. As you can see there is sim1 and sim2 HD capable messages in the notification panel, two HD icons in the status bar and also enhanced 4G LTE mode under network settings for both sim cards. This is definitely great news for those who are only having 4G only sim cards like Geo because now you can use any other sim card for data services and Geo for calling at the same time. It seems like Xiaomi was officially planning to update Mi A2 Lite with dual 4G and maybe they have used similar modem files for Mi A1 too. Third, treble support. No, the Pi update doesn't add treble support to your phone and as you can see the seamless system updates are supported but no project treble. Fourth, fast charging. Just like Oreo 8.0 update for Mi A1, now the lock screen status changes to charging rapidly when you connect your phone to your wall charger but sadly it's a bug. I've tested the phone using Xiaomi official quick charge 3.0 charger and it doesn't fast charge and the max rate at which phone gets charged is around 1800 to 1900 mAh. Fifth, camera app, there is no good news for us, it's the same camera app, same picture and video modes, so no front portrait mode, 1080p 60fps video recording, RDEIS, also camera to API is still disabled so you cannot simply download the Google camera port and install on your phone and also about the picture quality, I don't see any difference here. 6th Multi-Touch The touch flickering issue still prevails even after the Pi update. As you can judge from the screens, they haven't fixed this issue so you won't be having much pleasant experience playing FPS games like PUBG. 7th Gestures Swipe up navbar gesture is there. Once you enable it, the hardware kit gets disabled but just like the beta version, they stay backlit. Next, the swipe fingerprint gesture for notifications is missing. Also, they haven't added any double tap to wake or sleep gestures. 8th Apps the FM radio app is now enabled on our phone and it is working great. Next, the Oreo file manager has been replaced with Google Files Go app but you can also install an optional Mi file manager app from the Google Play Store. About other apps for digital well-being, you need to be signed up as a beta tester then update the app from the Google Play Store and then you will see the digital well-being tab under settings. 
And about the launcher, it also supports app shortcuts, but make sure you update apps like action services from the Google Play Store. The launcher now also supports weather information at the top of the home screen, but for this, the Google app needs to be signed in with your Google account, and no, the lock screen doesn't have any weather information. Ninth, the screenshots are editable. You can add filters, change color and light parameters, and also crop them. Tenth and final one, the benchmarks. After Pi update, Android 2 version 7 benchmark score is 78,204, and with Geekbench 4, single core score is 865, and multi core score is 4245. So that is it. I have tried to cover each and every question users asked me before. If I had left anything, do post a comment so that I can get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon in my next video.